Hello, and thanks for joining me for our weekly episode of NCIA Today. I'm your host, Bethany Moore, NCIA's Deputy Director of Communications, checking in with you every Friday with updates on what's happening in the cannabis industry and here at NCIA. Since we were hosting our Midwest Cannabis Business Conference in Detroit last week, we skipped last week's episode, but we're back now and we have plenty of news and updates for you. First of all, the event last week was a wonderful return to our trade shows after a year and a half due to COVID-19 restrictions. Everyone masked up and took extra precautions to stay safe with plenty of hand sanitizer and extra space on the expo floor and for seating arrangements in our educational sessions to help with social distancing. On top of that, the panel speakers, exhibitors, and workshops were a big hit. And more than anything, it was just so nice to see everyone. Now we're turning our attention to our next trade show in San Francisco on December 15th through 17th. So stay tuned for more information about NCIA's seventh annual Cannabis Business Summit and Expo. Okay, so let's keep on rocking and switch gears with some updates from what's happening at the federal level in Congress from our Deputy Director of Government Relations, Michelle Rudder Freeberg. Hey, Michelle, so nice to have seen you in person last week in Detroit at our Midwest Cannabis Business Conference instead of on a Zoom conference call, which we've been doing for the last year and a half. Yeah, no kidding. No, it was wonderful to see you, to see some of our members out there. Uh, had a great time seeing everybody in 3D again. Definitely looking forward to our big conference out in San Francisco in December. It'll be here before we know it, I know. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. And great job, by the way, on the morning fireside chat on day one, where you got on stage with our CEO, Aaron Smith, and you gave a nice federal policy update, as well as a breakdown on what we can expect going forward. I found it very entertaining for a policy update. <laughs> well, thank you. I will take that. I appreciate it. Anytime we can make policy a little more interesting, you know, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so now you are back in DC and after all that fun in Detroit, you've certainly hit the ground running on a couple of our key pieces of priority cannabis legislation. Is that right? Yep, that's right. It never stops and it didn't even stop while while we were in Detroit, but um, certainly since I gotten home, uh, I've gotten home either. Gotcha. Okay, so let's start with the Safe Banking Act. What in the world happened there? Well, like I mentioned, when we were out in Detroit, there were some exciting developments with the Safe Banking Act. To make a long story short, uh, the Safe Banking Act was added as an amendment, but it was just the same language as the bill, essentially. Well, not essentially. It was the same language as the bill. Was added as an amendment to the NDAA. So you guys might have seen that acronym. Some of you might know the NDAA is the National Defense Authorization Act. And that's one of those must-pass bills that when Congress votes on it, it gets like 400 plus votes in, in the House and stuff like that. So, you know, we're always looking for new creative ways to get our priority legislation passed. This was no uh, different than that. And so what ended up happening is, like I mentioned, the language of the Safe Banking Act was actually added as an amendment and tacked on to the NDAA. And that actually passed out of the House of Representatives. So that's really, really exciting for those of you who are counting. That now makes for the fifth time that the Safe Banking Act has passed out of the House. That's combined from last session and this session. But regardless, um, now we're up to five times. Um, so that was incredibly exciting. But you know, Bethany, I will be the first to admit that I am not a defense lobbyist. I never have been. So um, navigating what's going on with the NDAA is certainly uh, giving me a little bit of a crash course. But as for what's next, of course, just like so many things, now we are talking and looking towards the Senate. Um, so this legislation, it, the timeline is looking like the end of the year. That's usually when the NDAA is passed is usually sometime in December. And so during the months of October and November, we're going to be working with our allies and other stakeholders on Capitol Hill to work with the Senate and kind of figure out what the process is. There's a couple different options for how things can go, keep monitoring how things are playing out, and then go from 
from there and see uh, if we can keep safe banking included uh, and and maybe get it even passed into law via the NDAA. But, you know, nothing is, is ever as easy as it seems. Um, there's been some statements in public from people like Senator Booker um, and, and Leader Schumer about this. But regardless, we're certainly going to be checking in with those offices and, and trying to, to talk to them about that. So uh, really exciting development with safe banking, though. Um, you know, like I said, always looking for new ways. And, and we certainly found one. Wow. Yeah. A lot of moving parts there for sure. Um, so as for the MORE Act, um, I know you spent a couple of days watching the debate and the markup, <laughs> uh, I believe, uh, to keep on top of this. So what, what went down during that markup yeah, absolutely. So uh, just a couple days ago, the House Judiciary Committee sent out a notice saying we are going to have a markup uh, on a number of bills and the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act, also known as the Moore Act, was one of those bills. So uh, it's important to remember that the House Judiciary Committee is just one of the committees that this bill has been referred to. It does still have, I believe, eight other committees of jurisdiction. So this is just the first committee um, that's having a markup on it. Um, there is a difference between a hearing and a markup. Up. A markup is where you actually go through the legislation, offer amendments, vote on the amendments, and then, of course, vote on, on the bill uh, to get it out of committee. And so that's what happened uh, as on recording day. That's what happened uh, today and yesterday. And so the markup went really, really long. Um, yesterday, we did watch that. Uh, I did watch that all day. Unfortunately, it ended up rolling over into today. Um, but the good news is that the MORE Act passed out of the House Judiciary Committee. So one step closer uh, to, to floor action, again, barring some of those other committees, which it's sort of uncertain whether they will waive their jurisdiction as, as they did last session, or if some of them might do do that and some might want to have hearings and markups that's that's tbd and certainly at the discretion of those um uh, of the chairmen and women of those of those committees of jurisdiction but as i mentioned the bill did pass uh out of the judiciary committee it was uh almost a party line vote um not quite but uh that number was 26 to 15. A number of amendments were offered, uh, mostly by Republican members of the uh, committee. A couple of them were very, you know, clearly had to do with the MORE Act. There was also a lot of discussion about things that don't have to do with anything in the MORE Act, like discussions around COVID-19 and anti-vaccine things. Um, so that wasn't necessarily my favorite part of the hearing personally. Um, but all that's to say at the end of the day, uh, it was it was a good one and it passed out of there. So excited to see what's next for the bill. Again, going to be talking to some of those other committees of jurisdiction and seeing what their plans are for the legislation themselves. Riveting public television, right? It was something, <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, so several more committees still need to look over and have their debates and markups. Got it. Yep, they can they can do that. They can waive their jurisdiction. But you know, it's important to remember as we think about all these things, at least as it pertains to the House for sure, is that you know that chamber actually got slightly more conservative than the last time the Moore Act was voted on in December of 2020. The GOP actually picked up a couple more seats um, since then. So you know the dynamics are ever sh uh, shifting and the math is always changing. But uh, definitely an exciting uh, uh, moment in in for the for the bill's history. Yeah, never a dull moment in Washington, D.C. Um, so what does all of this mean for NCIA members? It means that there's exciting things happening. Stay tuned. Um, if you have questions, you can find me over on NCIA Connect. I uh, would always encourage any of our members that are really into policy uh, to look at our new Evergreen Roundtable. And, and I think that's the best way to keep in touch with some of our efforts and what we're doing here in DC. But like you said, there's no shortage of things. This was just two things over the last week. We still have things on the table, of course, like uh, the Canvas Administration and Opportunity Act, which you know we sent our feedback on uh, about a month ago. Also things like appropriations amendments, which there's about to, as of our recording, there's about to be a, a, a continuing resolution, a CR, but that's just kicking the, the can down the road a little bit. So tons to stay on top of, you know, NCI is always here to be a resource. And so make sure you stay up to date with all of our things, newsletter, blog, anyway. Awesome. Thanks. I really appreciate you taking a few minutes after running that marathon to update us on what's happening in D.C. Of course. No, it's it's good. At least um, it's exciting when things are happening in D.C. So it makes me happy, but always happy to answer any questions our members have. Like I said, you can find me over on NCIA Connect. Great. All right. I'll let you get back to it, Michelle. Thanks for checking in. Thanks, Bethany. And of course, you can read more about this recent news in Michelle's latest blog on NCIA's website, 
And if you're a member of NCIA, you can log into NCIA Connect to spark up further discussion on these issues. And to get back to our regular programming, let's review some blogs you can find on NCIA's website with even more helpful industry insights. In a new blog from Coil Hospitality Group, dispensary owners can take a page from the hotel industry's playbook with tips on customer acquisition and loyalty. Hoteliers talk and strategize about the guest journey. They track the touch points that guests encounter during the stay and create service standards for these moments of truth. For your staff, the guest journey begins with arrival and ends with departure. Learn more in this new blog with eight ways not to blow it with cast cannabis customer acquisition. Whew. Moving from the front of the house to the back office of your operations, Green Space Accounting shares some advice for staying compliant with your accounting, taxes, and payroll in their latest blog. All businesses must adhere to tax rules and regulatory compliance, but for cannabis companies, the laws are significantly more challenging to navigate. The cannabis industry has specific tax rules that differ from other sectors, and failing to follow them can result in severe financial and legal implications. Learn more on our website. And as I mentioned before, we're working diligently behind the scenes to prepare for our seventh annual Cannabis Business Summit and Expo, being held at the Moscone Center in San Francisco on December 15th through 17th. With unique content presented by the best and brightest minds in the industry, unmatched networking opportunities, and 400 plus exhibitors, this is an experience you won't want to miss. Conference programming will also include an option for the CannaVest West Investor Forum, as well as the International Cannabis Bar Association program. Tickets are now on sale and exhibitor booths are still available as well, so act now. And as always, NCIA members receive discounted or even sometimes free tickets to our trade shows, depending on your level of membership. Head to CannabisBusinessSummit.com for more details. Are you subscribed and tuning in to both of our weekly podcasts, NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice and NCIA's Cannabis Minority Report with host Khadijah Adams? You can find us on Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. In the meantime, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram to stay inspired and connected. If you're a member of NCIA, log into NCIA Connect and spark up a conversation with your fellow NCIA members and colleagues today. We'll see you next week.